Welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Safety Systems. Folks, we are already heading into June, which is unbelievable to me. Football will be here soon, then basketball. If you've ever wanted a home theater room, big screen, the surround sound, fully automated, all that stuff, now's the time to call VFL JJ Serlis and the great squad at Safety Systems to get a move on that, try and get that done by the time the sports seasons really kick off. Uh, I know these guys can do it. They do great work, fantastic work, and especially if you're building a home right now, oh my goodness, get your contractor in contact with Safety Systems, not just for security systems, but their home entertainment systems, their home automation, they do it all. Safetysystems.com. All right. This week, Danny White uh, was doing his uh, bi-monthly radio chat with John and Jimmy over on 991 The Sports Animals Sports Talk. And uh, Jimmy was asking him about scheduling and should that play a role in, you know, does attendance factor into that, trying to, to get more people in the stands. And Danny White said, I know nationally we talk about struggles with attendance. I've only been here for one season, and after coming out of the pandemic, I'm not sure attendance challenges apply to the Vols Nation. I was so impressed with the way we filled the stadium last year. Fair enough. Good deal. I think that's what most ADs <laughs> would probably spin it that way. You know, somebody's going to get mad that I said spin it, but that's, that's yeah. whenever these guys are talking, they're spinning. <laughs> <laughs> Coaches, ADs, there's few of them that just come out and very, tell you what they're Very political, yeah. politician similar. Very much, very much, because they're, they're trying to get you to buy tickets. They're trying to get you to donate. They don't want to tick you off. Uh, but I thought, let's take a look. Should Tennessee be concerned about attendance at all? So I went and simply looked at paid attendance numbers. And look, uh, I would find a number for this school's game that was listed here as this and here as this. So I went with wherever I saw it the most. This one looks the most accurate, so that's what we're going through for all 14 schools. Um, it's paid attendance. Keep in mind, real attendance is always lower than paid attendance. Always. These are the number of tickets sold, not the number of butts and seats. And when you were at Neyland Stadium last year, you know there were plenty of slots available. But let's just look at tickets sold. So four different charts. You guys tell me. They, you can look at them different ways. The first one is the total number of sellouts around the SEC last year. Georgia led the way. They sold out all six of their home games. So six sellouts out of six games. Alabama and Auburn both sold out four. It's amazing. Alabama only four sellouts out of seven. I think that yeah. might tell you something about just college football. Yeah, I'd like to see how Nick Saban spins that. So, down <laughs> Kentucky three. Oh, he'd be mad yelling at the Bama fans. Uh, Ole Miss two, South Carolina two, Florida with one, Tennessee with one. The only game they sold out last year was Ole Miss. They had over 100,000 sold, paid for Georgia. But Ole Miss was the only one that was sold out. And then Arkansas, LSU, Mississippi State, Missouri, and Vandy didn't have a single sellout all year long. Okay, chart number two, percentage of tickets sold for the season. What this is, Tennessee is 102.455, so multiply that by eight, the number of home games, then divide their actual sold, their actual paid attendance by that number, and you get the percentage. They are way down there. They're 11th in the SEC in terms of 84% of their tickets were sold last year, which, you know, better than Missouri and Vandy, but I don't think Tennessee wants to be between Arkansas no. and Mississippi State, but you look, Georgia 100%, Alabama, Auburn 99%, Florida 96, A&M 96, Kentucky 92%. Smaller stadium, but 92% full. LSU 92%, South Carolina 90%. Ole Miss 88%, even with that great year, and there's nothing else to do in Oxford. I would have thought they would have done better than 88%. But anyway, Tennessee 11th on that list. Let's look at the next one. Average paid attendance per game. Tennessee fifth on this one. All right, so their average paid attendance last year was 86, 386. Yeah. All right, uh, that's, that's where you look. All right another way of viewing this. Mm -hmm. If we're just looking at total tickets, we do have a bigger stadium, by golly. Look at this. So 86,000, Tennessee behind Alabama, A&M, LSU, and Georgia in terms of tickets sold, neck and neck with Auburn, slightly ahead of Florida, and then uh, significantly ahead of Carolina, Arkansas, the ones you'd think they would be ahead of. All right. And then the last chart, if you look at 86,000 and their average, their, their seats, 102,000, then that means how many seats are unsold on average? Woof. 16,000 on average last week, last year. Georgia, of course, they were sold out, so zero. Yeah. Auburn was 1,300 per game unsold. Alabama, on average, 1,300 per game unsold. Kentucky, 4,700. On down the list, but Arkansas, Mississippi State at 11. 
Tennessee and Missouri both at 16,000 and Vanderbilt 17,000. Okay, so my question, gentlemen, as we've blown through all these, <laughs> should Danny White be concerned about attendance or do you look at it and say, no, we get fifth in the SEC in terms of total tickets. What are you talking about? Or do you look at it and say, you're with Missouri and Vanderbilt in terms of unsold tickets. What's your, what's your angle? How do you view it? If I'm, if I'm Tennessee, I have to look at the 16,000 unsold tickets yes. that I had per game last year. Now, how much of that was opponents not buying their entire allotment? Some of those came back, but, but that's, that's not true, a big allotment. That's, 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 that's true of all of them. So I think I've got to look at the 16,000 unsold tickets. If you, if you give me the, well, 84% of all their tickets were sold, you go, I don't think that's bad, considering what you've been through for the past decade and a half. But then when you take that number that you've got 16,000 empty seats over there, and I said it a little bit earlier in the show, at 16,000 hot dogs you ain't selling, 16,000 Cokes yeah. you ain't selling, et cetera, et cetera. So, so yes, I think the concern, it's not, it's not a nine, but it's bigger than a two or a three. Chuck? Well, and I also, and I agree with everything Bob said, but also the average paid attendance. How many people are actually pay paying to buy a ticket and showing up to watch the games? Mm -hmm. And if you're not concerned, look at that number. What's well, 86,000? Well, it's, okay. 80, it's 86,000, but you've still got how many empty seats? Right, right. That's what I'm looking at Well, then there. I would look at the 16,000 rather than the 86. Yeah. yeah. So, so, I mean, but that's the number I'm looking at there. And it, the attendance seems to be doing this overall, not just at Tennessee. You got to give them, to, I, I'm, if I'm not concerned, I'm thinking at some point you got to give them more of a reason to come watch the football game, don't you? Like a good light show during the <laughs> well, and, and, like a north, and like a north end party deck that they're adding and more clubs. Yeah. yeah. Right. That's part of what I was going to say is I, I think there should be a level of concern, but maybe not to the degree that we might think based on those, those numbers because they are working on the renovations to Neela. They feel like, hey, that's going to help All, everything they've been through. Now they feel positive about the Josh Heupel direction they're going. I still think that the quality of opponent keeps people home. So I would still be concerned about that. And then obviously the revenue you lose when those people aren't there. But I, st I think they pro Danny White probably feels like, hey, we're addressing some of these things. It's an issue throughout college football, though. And, and Go ahead. Well, I, I was just going to say, also, I think if you could break, and there's no way to do it, but if you broke this down demographically, oh, okay. Exactly. But but come on, John. <laughs> but <Yeah. laughs> this that, took two that, hours. That, that, <laughs> I wish you had demos. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't what I said. What I'm saying is, are your young people not going to the games at the same rate as the older folks? Because when I'm there, everybody's yeah. 45, 50, yeah. 55, 60. Okay, does that number continue to go down? Because my kids okay. just don't have that big of an interest in going over there and watching. They sit home. It's more expensive than it's ever been, which means the yeah. people with yes. the money are going to be there. Yeah. So, uh, but I would just say there's two things. One, I would always be concerned. Yeah. I don't care if it's sold out and it's 100000 I would still be concerned that next year it's not going to be. <laughs> so uh, Danny White's got to say that, and that's, that's fine. I understand why he says that. That wouldn't be what I would say. I would say, look, guys, I'm always concerned about tickets, so we all got, we're always looking for ways to pack right. that place even more. I'm not going to take for granted the fact that we got a great fan base. I got to give them more. I got to give them more every year. That's what, that would be my selling point. Mm -hmm. More the light other, shows. The other thing I would do is – Rip out 10,000 seats, rip them out, put in more expensive club seats with more amenities and more fancy stuff to try and get people out of their homes to come over there and make up the cost for the seats you rip out. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it in club seats. Another part, you've added party decks and everything else. Getting to your point, of the part of that stuff you rip out, create some sort of little family zone where People bring their kids, and Smokey hangs out at this party deck, and their little games, and the kids may not be watching the game at all, but Daddy and Mama can take the kid there, and they're yep. watching the game, and they're playing games. And they're put that in the stadium because those little kids who go are going to remember up. that, and they're going to be going when they're 20, and they're going to be going when they're 40, and they're going to be going when they're 60. So if it's me, rip out the 10,000 seats. I agree. You don't need them. Find other ways, whether it's a – I'm just giving you examples, but – Kentucky did this. Can I give you a they quick example? They lessened their stand and it worked very quick. More bathrooms and more concession stands. <laughs> so where you're not standing in line but for, yeah, okay. for 20 minutes. More restaurants, more, more yeah. different. Yeah. yeah, very good. That's what I would do. That's the lesson I would take from that. But when we come back, did you notice how well Tennessee did this year across all sports in the SEC? It was pretty darn good. We'll talk about that next. Who deserves the credit? And we'll show you the numbers. Come on back. <laughs> 